The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the February 22nd fantastic Friday edition of today's opening bell on The Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today, folks. And my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call the light of understanding dissolves the phantom of fear. You know, many of our fears are no more, no more real than the eerie ghosts that haunt the houses on Elm Street on Friday the 13th. These, these phantoms of doubt, confusion, and pain, they're often just simply fabrications of our mind. You know, they may cause us to run away and hide or scream with fright. But when seen in the light of understanding, folks, our fears can dissolve. You know our acronym for fear, false evidence appearing real? Eleanor Roosevelt, she once wrote, you gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. Just think back about that. You know that is true in your life. It's true each and every day. When we look fear in the face, you may see right through it. After all, it is only a phantom. Remember this, folks. People who enjoy life and radiate happiness, happiness fear absolutely nothing. Fear has nor ever will lead. Hans Margolis, he once wrote, only in quiet waters, things mirror themselves undistorted. For me, that just simply means that only in a quiet mind can you perceive what is real. So stare fear in the face, quiet your mind down. Nothing in life is to be feared, folks. It is only to be understood. Let's go try to understand these markets out here. Right now, we've got the Dow futures up about 60 points, trading out at 13,931. We've got the ES Mini trading out at 1507. That's up six bucks and change. In fact, uh, we'll start off today taking a look at the daily chart of the uh, ES Mini. NASDAQ futures up about 13. King dollar back just a few ticks. The uh, rest of the currency market, relatively calm. The euro's calm. Uh, Japanese yen. Everything in the currency market pretty calm. Gold, though, the metals market, uh, the metals market trading down again. Right now, you've got gold down only seven bucks just uh, right now, down at fifteen seventy-two. Silver off twenty-three cents out of twenty-four or twenty-eight forty-seven. A slip of the tongue there. Soon to be twenty-four. Uh, you've got uh, a light sweet crude that's flat trading out at ninety-two eighty-three. And hope that uh, you folks caught uh, Tom on uh, the uh, uh, Squawk Box this morning at uh, 7.30. You know, uh, he's going to be a co-host there one of these days. I just know it. I can feel it. I can see it. It was a, a great segment. I'm sure that uh, it'll be up on the uh, TFNN site here within the next hour or so. Great segment if you uh, missed it, so you want to check that out. Around the uh, globe here, we've got the uh, Hang Seng was down 124 points overnight over at the uh, Shanghai, also off a half a percent down 12 points. The Nikkei up 76. Right now in Europe, you've got the uh, DAX up 61 points and the FTSE up 41. Our call number is 877-927-6648. If you are listening on the radio or maybe your mobile device by using tfnn.mob, I don't forget you can always catch the live stream of this show by going to the homepage of tfnn.com. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see the button there with three smartphone devices. Just click on that. You'll be able to see the show streaming live, and then you can get the replay of this on Channel 9 on Tiger TV. As we take a look at the ES Mini, what did we have happen yesterday? We had follow-through. So we have a market top-in for the moment. We had foul through yesterday. That's what you need. That's really what you want when you see a bearish candle out there. We've got the market popping. Yesterday when we came on the air, uh, I had shown you a trade that I had taken in the ES Mini, uh, simply utilizing the technique that I had shared Wednesday evening with uh, so many folks that had uh, joined me. And I, again, just want to say thank you. It turned out to be yesterday I ran a little bit out of energy because I put so much energy into making sure that the uh, – you know, any type of workshop that I do is just simply the best that it possibly can be. And then I go back and try to figure out how to make it even 
better out there. And it was one great hour of impactful information. And uh, yesterday was kind of a little bit of, uh, okay, it was over. Not that it was over. It was great, really. It was just the beginning. Because for me, it was just the beginning because of simply being able to share some incredible, awesome tools that will absolutely impact the way that people trade. Now, I did get stopped out of my first trade on the ES Mini and got back in uh, after we got another candle uh, signal yesterday afternoon. But let's that's on the intraday chart. Let's take a look at the daily chart out here and why an intraday chart. The markets are just simply they're breathing, living organisms. It's you, it's me, you know, that are trading the markets, and so things aren't going to go straight up. They're not going to go straight down, and they offer great intraday trading patterns. Uh, but let's take a look at the daily chart. We're going to look at the ES mini, big bearish engulfing bear sash candle that we're looking at here that occurred on a Wednesday, February the twentieth. Uh, right now, you're getting a little bit of a pop, and uh, as long as as the uh, ES Mini today uh, closes out, well, ideally it would close out from a, look, from a bullish standpoint. You want to see it get back in to that February 19th candle post-haste. That would be today. The low of that candle is 15, 15, 25. So long as the uh, ES Mini doesn't close inside that level, you'd still have a uh, bearish engulf. And you could still have a dark cloud cover candle as well. But uh, that is what would be needed. And maybe the ES Mini will go ahead and pop up there. We'll go down and take a look at the intraday charts. But... Uh, you know, you had follow through yesterday. You had conviction because you had accelerated volume. And remember, this is a market here where the uh, bulls have been rewarded for buying any of the uh, dips. So on the move back down into the breakout session and every market, every instrument goes back to the breakout session. It's just really a matter of when. In this case here, the most recent breakout session is going to take you into that January 2nd candle on the ES Mini. That's 14.58 as the high and 14.38 as the uh, low. I suspect it's at that 14.38 that we will get a release of information. Let's not forget our old friend, September 14th. That was the uh, swing point. In fact, we'll draw a, a line across the uh, screen here. Uh, that was the swing point that was taken out, uh, which is not really too, too long ago. But that was a swing point that did act as a resistance. So when you take a look at your support areas on the uh, ES Mini, it's going to be that high of September 14th. That level is going to be 1468. That's going to be so darn close to the uh, January 2nd level that I just can't see at least January 2nd being uh, tagged out there at that 1458. If we go down and take a look at the intraday chart, let's go look at the 30-minute uh, chart. We'll do that for the ES Mini. We'll go see what it is uh, doing out here. And uh, this thing here gets up to 66.71 on the uh, relative strength. Indicator. Now, this black line going across the screen, for those of you that have listened to the show, uh, what I'll do here is I'm going to come back on the – I'm going to move this chart back if I can, and I'll scrunch it down. We know that scrunch – I don't think it's a word. I'm going to have to look it up, see if scrunch is a word. Now, back here, folks, to the highs uh, back in uh, February 1st. So the beginning of February, the beginning of February, we had this little consolidation area. It ran from February 1st until the uh, ES Mini broke out at 1030 in the morning on February the 8th. So it ran for about, uh, well, I don't know if it was truly seven trading sessions, but it ran from February 1st through February the 8th out there. And that set up a consolidation. That set up a resistance area. That resistance area was broken. When you break a resistance area, what often happens is you come back and test it. In fact, the ES Mini came back, as you see me pulling this chart off to the side here, came back and tested it right around the February 12th level, rejected it, continued to move higher, tested it again here with a little hammer candle. Again, we're looking at a 30-minute chart on February the 14th on Valentine's Day at about 6.30 in the morning, rejected that level. Now, as we take a look at what happened here recently, and this was on Wednesday, February 20th, is that level got broken. So now it broke. It did not hold as a support level. Once you break a support level, Level, uh, the market will go move back up and test it again, and that's exactly really what we've had here. And it's why you want to be able to identify these areas of support and resistance on your charts because they help to explain. In fact, when you enter a trade, I entered a trade here on the ES Mini, and this was at about uh, 3 o'clock, a little just past 3 on uh, yesterday afternoon out there. Got a nice little reversal signal, nice little bullish candle. Remember, you do not trade just solely on candlesticks. Candlesticks are how you read the message of what's going on between the uh, bulls and the bears out there. But that's all that that's for. You want to be using other tools, other patterns 
to be able to identify when to enter, when to uh, exit a trade. So right now we're seeing the ES Mini as it's gotten up to the uh, over, it's close to the over uh, bought condition, it hasn't actually made it up there. You can see this area here acting as a resistance zone. I suspect that what we will see at the end of the day, we'll see the ES Mini close back below that February 1st level. Maybe it's 1518 uh, that it gets up to. So long as it stays under 1518, it has a uh, bearish outlook out there. Let's go take a look at the uh, gold market here. Let's take a look at uh, metals. Uh, gold back uh, six bucks right now. Let's go see what we have going on out here. And as we take a look at gold, this is the daily chart. Now, the red line uh, that you see on my uh, screen here, that is the high of the swing point from May 16th. That high is 1552. The low that you hear us talking about is the 1526 level. Only uh, 159,000 contracts there. And you can see the uh, market moving down there with conviction yesterday, 260. 60,000 contracts. Now, it stopped before it got to that uh, swing point. And what's really key to be watching here, you, wanna, you really want to understand uh, your, you know, your candlesticks. In my opinion, you do, because it uh, just makes it so much easier. And when we take a look at the uh, candlestick going back uh, two trading sessions ago on Wednesday, you see that long-ranging bar here. You know, yesterday's push down, that certainly, they, because the candle's green, does not mean that it's a bullish candle. In fact, in this case here, trading with inside the body of this candle and trading inside here maybe for the next uh, three or four days where it would build some cause, any time the market uh, moves or closes below the February 20th uh, close, that, that amount is, uh, that close was 15.64. Once you get below 15.64, it will become a continuation candle on the way down. And that's all that we're seeing right now. You know, if you see a small-bodied candle, and just because it, uh, you, you might think that it's rejected the lows by getting down to 15.54, uh, that, is, uh, that does not mean that the move lower in gold is over. Not at all. So that is on gold right now. Just simply ran out of a little energy, and it's just building some cause to bust through. And the question is, with it being so close to that 1526 level and coming down there with such volume, is it finally getting ready to break this longer-term resistance level that goes back to September 26? 877 Would love to hear from you. Give me a call, folks. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining 
planning is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol M-U-X. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, and uh, let's take a look at uh, silver. We were taking a look at gold before the uh, break, and let's switch over to silver. You know, you don't really see much from a candle standpoint. You don't see uh, anything different. We had that wide-ranging bar coming down on a Wednesday. What you see here, in fact, silver, quite frankly, giving you uh, more of the ideal uh, continuation pattern to the uh, downside with these small bodies here. So as long as you see some small bodies within that larger body here over the next uh uh, over the next several trading sessions, you get a close in silver uh, below 28.25. Uh, You've got a continuation move. Now, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, what you should see on my uh, screen is you should see two different colored patterns out here. The first one is the uh, is the yellow colored pattern. That was when silver, in essence, made its point six one eight Gartley buy pattern, and it completed that pattern right. Uh, I've got it marked as about December the twentieth at the price point, the low of about twenty nine dollars and sixty three cents out there. You did have price uh, move back through it here on that uh, January fourth level, where it created a ver it was not a hammer candle, did not really qualify as a hammer candle, but pretty darn close. And we know that gold did have that hammer candle out there and that also you know when you take a look at that wick here you can see the bulls truly stepped in on that january 4th trading session now as you know so this is going to help you with regard to being able to play stops out here if you were taking a, a trade let's say on the slv uh let's not use the uh, silver contract here but let's just and, and use this use what it is i'm going to teach you not per se with regard to the actual contract but with regard to being able to trade any pattern that you have out there where you're trading a 0.618 gartley buy or gartley sell and what's really important is making sure that you use a wide enough stop. You see, the stop that you use doesn't change your trade with the exception of your position size with regard to the number of shares that you use. Because your first calculation, the easiest calculation that one can make, is how much is it that I'm going to risk on a trade. And it doesn't matter the dollar amount of the trade. It's always going to be 1% of your working capital. That is until you understand the total expectancy of your trading system out there. But the simple thing is 1% of your trading capital. And if your trading capital is, let's just use $10,000, means that your risk is going to be $100 on any one trade. Then the only calculation you need to make after that is going to be what's your stop. Well, 
on a .618 Gartley pattern, if it fails, it's going to move down to the .786 level. In this case here, we can see that's exactly what happened here in silver. It failed at that .618. It failed here coming in on uh, Tuesday on the December uh, 19th uh, 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 session. Of course, it really broke through it here on Wednesday. And when it failed, where did it run down to? Ran down to the .786 area. Now, I've got it marked on my screen here as 2793. You actually had silver get down to a low of 2825. Pretty darn close to me. Close enough uh, for my line of work, even though I haven't changed the uh, marks on my uh, system. In fact, quite frankly, I'm going to, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll do it here in a, in a moment or maybe during the break or something. My guess is at uh, 2850, 2825, we probably have a point, uh, a 1.6 weight expansion of the B to C uh, swing point out there. But I don't want to change anything here right now. I just want you to, to look at this and I want you to take this in. And that is to understand because when you hear me or others say, look, if a 618 Gartley fails, it's going to go to the 786 level. And what does that mean to you? What it means to you is being able to identify your stop is when you take a look at your stop, you should look at being able to cover that range. If the .618 level and the reward to risk doesn't make sense on taking the trade, then what that means is you shouldn't take the trade. It doesn't mean to go ahead and put in a, a tighter stop there because once you understand your stop, you're going to take, in this case here, that $100, you're going to divide it by whatever that stop is. If your stop was $2, it says you can buy 50 shares. Now, $100 doesn't mean, with regard to or 1% risk, doesn't mean that you're only buying $100 worth of stock. It means that's what you're going to risk. That's your controlled risk. Obviously, a market can gap up, can gap down around us, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you use controlled risk, and it's just about your position size. So don't let the width of a stop do anything other than change the number of shares that you buy, and your expectations should be to understand where price will normally travel to. In this case here, we've had a failure of a .618 Gartley buy. It's gone down to the .786 level. Now, if you were inclined to take a long position here and i do not recommend that you do that i absolutely do not recommend that you do that but that doesn't mean that i'm right it means if you did take it here where's price going to travel to well price will first travel back down to the swing point in this case here make a hundred percent move of a move but the longer that price stays right around this level here and we've got a potential continuation pattern with a close below wednesday's close out here the longer it travels sideways when a point seven eight six Gartley fails, that turns into something with wings. That's what we call a butterfly pattern out there. That means that silver would get ready to bust those June lows out there. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could 
should have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow up 65 points, composite up 19, S&P's up uh, 7, small caps up 7, Google up 2 bucks and change. Apple up two bucks and change. Microsoft up 16 ticks. Intel up six pennies. Cisco up 13 as well. Lead the charge to the upside. You've got Source Fire Inc. F I R E is the uh, ticker symbol up 14% out with uh, revenues and uh, earnings here. Looks like their earnings per share, eight cents versus 14 cents a, a year ago. Don't know what their guidance is, but the uh, stock uh, price is certainly on fire this morning as the uh, leader in the uh, clubhouse. If we take a look at it, gapping up here, running into an area of resistance. Uh, you say, well, how do you know it's an area of resistance? Well, just let's draw a line across across the uh, screen just a simple line out there because you can see each time price makes its way up into this area in fact source fire here gapped up on november the 11th with volume looked like that was going to be a, a breakout session and of course uh, it turned out to not be a breakout session so that truly setting a, a resistance level you can see as price moved up in that area again back in the uh, december the early december uh, time frame the late november time frame and the area that i'm referring to folks is about the 49.57 Let's just call it $50 right now. That held as some resistance out there. And then again here, you see a, a candle on January 2nd, uh, 2013. Price tries to get up there and gets rejected. So today, you've got nice volume in this. You've got 418,000 uh, shares. Uh, that's going into this, uh, this little swing point that was created that started this consolidation here from November. November 1st, that has 4.2 million shares out there. And in fact, if we take a look at the uh, downdraft here, maybe this is part of the supply line. Can't believe that that's the the entire supply line because we're looking at a downdraft candle here going back to august 1st 4.7 million shares to the downside that when you take a look at 4.2 million shares to the upside on november 1st out here but right now you've got source fire up against a, a resistance now this is pretty cool 
We pull the uh, stock chart back further and take a look at where the uh, real support is. Now, the real support on this equity is this gap up here, and this gap up that we're taking a look at, folks, and that has some real conviction behind it. That was on uh, 222. How about that? February 22nd. How does that happen? Isn't today February 22nd? How about that, folks? February 22nd, 2011. Somebody could probably look that up. That probably was an earnings release out there, uh, I, I'm imagining. I don't know what it was, but uh, how coincidental is that? 5.6 million shares to the upside. Nice big gap. The gap has not been uh, filled. Prices moved down inside the uh, gap, but it has not been uh, filled. The actual top of the gap here would be the candle, the breakout session from February 21st out there. That high is $36.38. That gap up again, 5.6 million shares. So if we're taking a look at a, a support level on uh, this equity here it really is you know it's at the bottom of this uh, consolidation range that uh, source fire is uh, trading into so well, let's take a look at what that uh, dollar amount is out here i'm gonna put this one in, in black so i would say if, if source fire can't bust this thing up what will it do it will go ahead and move probably back down into the area of february the 7th out there right in the 39 dollar range and let's say you wanted to buy this equity here you know or you wanted to trade the range on this you got to be careful of this this gap that is below and that means that you'd want to try to find you'd want to see some type of bullish candle on this, but not a bad trading range, forty dollars to forty-eight or fifty. Got ten dollars on a forty-dollar stock. Uh, uh, my math equation says that's about twenty-five percent. So I would uh, go ahead and put this one on a uh, list here. And uh, no, I wouldn't uh, yes. go ahead and uh, short this uh, equity. You've had two signs of strength out here. That one uh, being November 11th, and then obviously you've got uh, today as well. But might not be a, a bad play here the next time it moves down into that uh, $40 level. We take a look at uh, relative strength indicator on this. You know, it shows the idea is you want to be able to buy this when it is. In fact, you had a, in fact, one of the, uh, thing, and how about this? So it's a beautiful thing here because one of the uh, things that I uh, taught on, uh, shared with everybody on Wednesday at the workshop actually reared its head here to give you a signal that uh, this was a uh, buy coming into this uh, candle session here from February the uh, 13th out there. Again, our call-in number is 877-927-6648. Let's continue taking a look at what is uh, popping and dropping in the uh, marketplace. you got Nordson, not to be con uh, confused with Nordstrom's, Nordsin, N-D-S-N, is the uh, ticker symbol. And uh, they are down 6% this morning here. Let's go take a look at this stock chart, see if it's got volume behind its move on the uh, way down. Equinix uh, just uh, took over the lead there. But let's stay with uh, Nordsin, N D. SN is the uh, ticker symbol. Gapping down has got some volume. Oh, we can see a high volume bar that sticks out like a uh, sore thumb here. And that happens to be this. Uh, that's where it's trading into or will be trading into here in just a bit of time. That is the November 30th candle, 2.1 million shares. Now, you had wide well, accelerated volume on that trading session. No wide price spread, which always uh, makes it suspect to me. But still, nonetheless, that will hold or should hold as a, a support level. If that area breaks or the bottom of that candle breaks and price moves down below it, we'll go find out where it's going to head to. And that low was $60.19. Here is a, a breakout session. Here's a, another equity. Let's pull this back, see if this is an IPO. It's not, but it has a similar uh, most recent chart pattern to fire, source fire out there. And as we take a look at the last sign of uh, strength out here, the real sign of strength where you had accelerated volume and wide price spread, that's going to take you back to the uh, trading session of August 21st out there. As we take a look at that, 2.3 million shares to the upside. So that's a, a nice breakout. Uh, and what the equity did was it came back on the uh, 23rd of October, pulls back with 278,000 shares, never gets to the top of the August 20th candle. The top there would be 55.44, had 383,000 shares, but was pulling back nicely. Let's take this uh, RSI indicator. Let's stick it up here and see what uh, this equity was doing out here. Now you can see on that gap up day and here's it's important to understand and why you don't necessarily have to chase things you want to you want to be on a fishing expedition and let it pull back to you so take a look at this equity if this was something that you were interested in here on the uh, 21st as it was uh, gapping up was getting into that extreme overbought condition we know that that has to work its way off and really it worked its way off just simply by moving sideways and then finally pulling uh, back now it never made it down to the uh, lows uh, out there uh, but this uh, did give you a uh, bullish uh, candle signal right here on the uh, 24th 
uh, or 20, uh, 23rd of October out there and has had a, done a nice job moving higher. Even had this little sign of strength, a mini sign of strength on January 2nd compared to the market, a real mini sign of strength. That uh, gapped up with 362,000 shares. Trading session before did 237. So pulling back, so I don't, you know, that, that certainly would be an area of support. However, that area just simply getting demolished today. So this will pull back. This will likely test at least that November 30th candle. And if this comes back further, You'll just have to take a look at the volume today. But if, if volume does not totally explode out of this equity, it might be something to uh, put on a, a list to take a look at. And, uh, and when I say totally explode, you don't want to see the volume today over 2 million uh, shares. And so far, it has done 162,000. That is on NDSN. you got Netflix now in the uh, charge to the uh, downside. Let's kind of go back and forth here. Let's go take a look at the Ruba Networks, A-R-U-N. Uh, they are out uh, this morning. Let me see if they're out with uh, numbers here. They are moving up nicely. Maybe there's a buyout going on, 28%. So let's go see what is behind uh, this out here, Aruba Networks. Uh, okay, they are out with earnings. Their revenue, $155 million. That's up 23% over $126 uh, million a year ago. Earnings per share, $0.22 cents versus $0.16 cents out there. Uh, so this is Aruba Networks having a nice trading session out here. Looks like this is actually breaking out altogether. Let's pull no, okay, let's pull this back here. No, it's not breaking out altogether, but certainly breaking out over a uh, area that had acted as a, a resistance level uh, here recently. Let's go ahead and put that line across the screen. We'll go ahead and put the weekly chart up uh, in a, a moment here. But on the daily chart, you can see the red line, the horizontal line going across the screen, really acting as a, a resistance point, and this morning breaking through that with conviction with volume let's take a look at the a to b equals cd pattern that uh, could be setting up here on the uh, daily we'll, we'll take a look at this on the weekly as well and i'll give you those uh i'll give you those areas the a point on this is going to be i'll use june 6 2012 the low there thirteen dollars and 18 cents your b point is the october 1st candle uh, four four point one million shares, the highest twenty three nineteen. Let's draw the uh, line across the uh, screen here, uh, and we'll do that in uh, black. We'll do the uh, same thing on the uh, volume bar out here. That volume bar right here, and let's see. This thing is being taken out uh, with volume. No, as it first got over the B point, which was on January twenty eighth, did it with just slightly over four million shares, and the B point out here had uh, just slightly over 4 million shares, and he gapped up through it. So that was a good sign. This here being a, uh, um, uh, then it moved back down, and when it moved back down, I guess a little bit of cause for concern here because when, I, when it got back below that B point, it did it on uh, February the 7th, and it did that with some uh, volume out there. So it makes the A to B equal CD structure somewhat suspect. However, today, over the B point, with accelerated volume, and wide price spread. And when you're taking a look at the wide price spread and the gap, even in your mind, just visualize completing this candle all the way down to the close of yesterday's candle. So you see this gap here. That's why gaps are so important, because when you're taking a look at gaps, oftentimes people overlook the gap that's in there, the actual space that's in there. And all you need to do in your mind is just color that candle in in that space and just simply come down to the close of the prior session. Well, if we take a look at this, uh, on the uh, daily chart here, perhaps one of the uh, largest uh, gaps or largest candles on the uh, way up and uh, running into uh, one of the largest candles on the way down. So this may may get a little bit of overhead resistance here, and that is dealing with the May 20th level. 19 million shares, that was a, a downdraft for sure. 19 million shares, the high of that is 31.17, the low 26.98, uh, trading out at 26.60 uh, right now. So it looks like that, in fact, may be an area of some uh, of some resistance out here. Now, if it closes inside there, what this uh, equity ought to do is complete the A to B equals CD up, which is 28.49. That's the one-to-one. -one. Uh, the uh, top of that uh, May 20th candle, that's 31.17. 31.45 is a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD uh, up. I suspect that's really where it will travel to. And what you also have right at that level is the 786 retracement. 
So it looks like a Gartley cell pattern uh, getting in store for Aruba Networks, A-R-U-N, as it makes that 3145 move out there. Uh, let's take a peek in on the uh, currency market. Let's see what we've got going on over in uh, Europe here. We're taking a look at the euro. The euro here, you know, making a uh, low, making a little hammer candle on uh, 6 o'clock yesterday morning. Uh, we took a look at that during, <coughs> excuse me, during one of the uh, shows yesterday. Might have been the uh, 10 to 11 o'clock show. This is the 30-minute chart that we were looking at. We could clearly see where the bulls were trying to take over in the euro. It had formed two hammer candles, one at 5 a.m., another at uh, 6 a.m. That level was tested. I'm going to draw the line across the uh, screen here. We'll see that level has been tested. That level has held. Uh, that is an important point to uh, mark on your uh, chart if you were trading uh, the euro out there. Uh, and you can see that that level was tested coming back into 3 o'clock yesterday. Rejected that level. Of course, our markets uh, started to uh, uh, move higher at 3 o'clock. That was where I actually took a, a long position in the ES on a 30-minute trade out, 30-minute chart uh, out there. Uh, so you can see the euro also coming and into a uh, support area, which held. You can see even the euro as it punched down here at the uh, 6.30 time frame this morning also held. So very easy to identify where the bulls are hanging out inside the euro. And that's really important here because we'll put the daily chart on the screen because the daily chart, the weekly chart, is screaming that the euro wants lower price. What's that going to do? That's going to give some energy to the uh, king out here. But now you know that next line. In fact, you know, the next Nadex uh, bull bear binary option hour is up next. And so this would become a relatively easy trade to go out there and search for because you take two sides of this trade here. If the uh, market moves down into this hammer candle, closes back up above it, that would be an area of support. And that would say, okay, let's go ahead and take a, a long position. Where is it that the euro could travel to? Well, I'd say the shooting star, this little shooting star out here created uh, at 4.30 in the morning. What's a shooting star? Well, it's the opposite of the hammer. Hammer. It's the opposite of the hammer from the with the and the, I mean the complete opposite because it's happening as a market is moving higher. If you take a look at it, so that is a very so we can see where the bears are and we can see where the bulls are. You see, folks, they cannot hide. They have to play their hand. They have to show their hand. This is like going to Las Vegas, playing the game of blackjack, and the dealer has to show their cards. And they show their cards, and then you get to decide. You get to decide whether or not you want to go ahead and put that money that you had put down as a trade or not. You can take it off the table out here. So we know where the bears are. They're at this shooting star candle. Uh, you can also see a little bit of resistance here because the last time up in that area, which was at 1130 in the morning on uh, yesterday, February 21st out there in about the one. 32, 302 level you can see. Now you know exactly where the uh, bears are hanging out. You know where the bulls are hanging out. This would make a potential nice trade using the Nadex platform. Now let's go take a look at the uh, king. Let's go see what the uh, king is doing here while we have just a few seconds. The king here getting up over its first resistance area. That was this red horizontal line here. That was a tested area of resistance. That was the gap. Now we've got the uh, king dollar here moving above another area of resistance out here this is a strong area of resistance folks once the king gets above that the king on its way up to the july 24th area of course first it's got a few stops it's got to stop at suite 618 82 dollars and 14 cents and then 83 dollars and six pennies 877-927-6648 dow's up 38 s and p's up five we'll be right back You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow up 34 points right now. Composite up uh, nine. Uh, S and P's up four. And let's take a look at the Cabot Oil and Gas C O G Cog, like Cog Hill out there. Great golf course to play if you ever get a chance. Uh, Cabot Oil and Gas up eight uh, percent this morning at four dollars and fifty cents. Now, what I've got on my chart here is I've got the weekly. We're taking a look at the weekly chart here, trading at fifty eight uh, forty three. And as you take a look at this chart here, what I want you to be able to learn, I'd love you to be able to learn the power of uh, candlesticks because it's, it's the communication of the market. It's like trying to, it's like trying to uh, speak without learning, uh, you know, uh, English out there or whatever language it is you've got to speak in. And that's what this is all about. Now, does anybody see a continuation pattern out there? Just take a look at the chart here just for a moment and look towards the right-hand side. You know, I was talking earlier about gold and silver. We were taking a look at those. We were taking a look at the wide ranging bar. It doesn't necessarily have to be a totally wide ranging bar, but we were taking a look at price that was traveling with inside the uh, candlestick. I'm giving you a little bit of a hint. So, do you see? Do you see anything like that out here? And we talked about continuation patterns when you move above that area out here. Well, here, let's take a look at it. We've got this candle session right here on December 21st, 2012. The weekly chart we're looking at, the low out there is a low of, uh, where is the low? 46.52 in the high, 
Fifty-one eighteen. Now the body is really the essence of price out there. The body what is what it is that you're paying attention to. The uh, wicks on there, you know, just really the extreme emotion of the uh, market. Not a lot of extreme emotion uh, that week. So very bullish candle out here. In fact, as a uh, as a powerful from a power candle going from zero to ten, uh, that candle uh, qualifies as probably a type three. Three being the strongest. One, one being the strongest. So three. Uh, maybe I should reverse those numbers around. But you you get the picture out here. Take a look at the following three weeks. Really just small bodies trading with inside the body of this candle now what did uh, what did we have here do we have any real bearish candles well this candle right here the week of uh, january 11th out there is actually what's referred to as a bear sash pretty pretty powerful candle out there in fact, uh, you know, on a, a scale of five, and a, a, because I'm using a, I'm using two candle reversal signals out here, uh, that's a very powerful. It's like a four out of five out there. However, you, what you have to do is what's going on on the left hand side, trading with inside this body. Would you have closed out your uh, Would you have closed out your trade on this? Absolutely not. You want to wait to see what happens. You, sometimes you just have to be patient and let the bulls and bears tell you what it is that they want to do out here. What happens as soon as this closes above it? In fact, it's the following week. The week of uh, January 18th out there closes out at 51.38. That tells you you have a continuation pattern, a continuation pattern. Then what you've got to do is you've got to use other tools out there. You've got to use maybe A to B equals CD. Well, your A, to a point on this is going to be the lows on the weekly chart coming into September 24th. Your high, your B point on here is going to be 11, 11, 11. That sounds like uh, Cabot Oil and Gas went to uh, Las Vegas to play the uh, crap stable out there. The one-to-one A to B equals CD up on this takes you to 6048. Would that have been powerful to know that you had a continuation here? You, know, you don't have to buy extremes. You don't have to buy A's or B's or C points out there or sell D points. There's other ways for you to be able to make money on a trade and understand what the bulls and bears are telling you to do out here. You have that continuation pattern out here. So that is on Cabot Oil and Gas. I hope that you uh, learned that. If you'd like to learn it, folks, look, I've got a really, really, I mean a really good workshop on understanding candlestick patterns. It will it will, folks, what it will do is it will compress decades into days. I will show you exactly what it is that you need to uh, learn. If you're interested in that, uh, just send me an email. You can also take a look on my uh, uh, on, uh, under on the main page at, uh, uh, at TFNN. Just look at uh, the Trader's Edge show, this show right here. And on the page that it takes you to, you will see that uh, one-day workshop. Folks, if you're off to start your day, have just simply an incredibly fantastic uh, weekend. And Friday, I look forward to seeing you back here on uh, Monday. Stay tuned for the Nadex Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. And remember this, folks, you have an amazing power within yourself. And that power is so strong, it'll create a life of abundance, cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, and mostly create fantastic, loving families. Thanks for being a part of the TFNN family. Have a great weekend, folks.